Well, another aspect of this is signifying Jewishness in general. And we see that with political bumper stickers and and college t-shirts that have the names of the candidate or the university in Hebrew letters. And in that case, if someone's wearing, let's say, a, um, a Biden shirt, then it, it shows that they support Biden, but also that they are Jewishly connected, right? But it's also sort of coded because if it just has the Hebrew letters, then people who don't read the Hebrew letters won't understand it. And even some people who do read the Hebrew letters might have trouble understanding it because they're not used to seeing words that are not Hebrew written in Hebrew letters. And I think you you see this at camp too. There's a little bit of an insider lingo going on there. And some people might be turned off from certain camps that have a lot of Hebrew because they don't feel comfortable with it, and especially the writing. And we saw this come up in the ideological debates at camps about how much Hebrew should we have. We talk about a tipping point. If you have too much Hebrew, then you might alienate some campers and some families and some potential staff members who might feel uncomfortable with so many Hebrew signs. On the other hand, if you don't have that Hebrew, then you're missing out on that opportunity to foster that extra little bit of Jewish connection in your camp. We have to think that Hebrew also is a way that you can display or you can perform or you can articulate your Jewishness, whatever that is. So, you know, you can choose to wear a certain kind of clothing. You can choose to have certain kind of food or not. Right. But. Hebrew is one of those ways, and it'll continue to be ways that you can express the type of, of Jew, if any, that you are, right? That it, it displays certain kinds of knowledge. It displays certain kinds of experiences, how you pronounce a word, whether it's uh, uh, Shabbat Shalom or Mazel tov, mazal tov, those kinds of things. Each of those articulations is a display of a, of a type of knowledge, but all of them, it's not a matter of saying one is necessarily better or one is uh, more important than the other, but each of these, e- using Hebrew is a way of, of showing a type of belongingness and that the tent is, is hopefully big enough to encompass all of these all of these forms. And it's not only spoken Hebrew, uh, but obviously written Hebrew too, how you engage with written language as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm struck. I was just thinking, you know, Sarah and Sharon, as you were talking, I was thinking about the 2020 election and the Biden-Harris logo, but in Hebrew, right? You know, you saw people using Bet Hey, right? Is the acronym for Baruch Hashem, you know, but also for Biden-Harris. And I mean, it's just interesting to think about the ways in which Hebrew comes to permeate certain aspects of Jewish culture in a distinctly American way. The Biden-Harris, if it were written out, let's say, in Hebrew letters, so that's one level, right? So someone might be able to see that and might recognize even just the colors or something about it. Oh, that's Biden-Harris, right? There might be other people who read that and say, oh, you know, I can read it and I clearly see what that is, right? The other level is someone who recognizes the bet hey as some wordplay. All of those are doing Jewish, meaning it's just at different levels. And that's what makes it really cool. But it's also about how one orients him or herself to the language and, and sees it as a part of him or herself. To some extent, the bet hey reminds me a little bit of a kind of a rainbow flag sticker that you might see in somebody's car. and. For a certain community, they know exactly what that is and what it represents, um, and you feel a sense of community or a sense of political allegiance with that person, or you don't. Uh, I think with the bet hey, when you see that, either you know what that is or you just keep driving and you have no idea what that is, right? Um, but if you do know what it is, then suddenly there are all these coded assumptions that are in that sticker that you know, you've suddenly created a relationship with that person who you don't even know just by virtue of the fact that that person has a bet hay on their car. 
And we also see that in Camp Hebraized English, there's a great example of this in a J-Date commercial where in uh, the first scene, you have a guy and a girl in a restaurant and he mentions something about Maccabia and she says, what's that? And then he says, oh, I'm getting tired and leaves. And then you see him with another girl, this time with dark curly hair. He, <laughs> and he says something about Maccabia and she says, you have Maccabia? We call it that too. Do you want to meet my parents? And so in this case, you have a word, Maccabia, that is common at many, many camps. In fact, 50% or so of the camps that we surveyed use that word. And it leads to connections outside of camp, that people have that insider language and they see other people who have that same language as also an insider.